Okay, so if you should think about a UX should be, what would you think about? Five seconds to think about it. Great. Now raise your hand if uh, your first thought was uh, it being uh, clear, functional. Okay. What about emotion driven? <laughs> now let's go back down to Earth. I mean, not really because we are on the International Space Station. And now we see a set of objects of space that is function driven. And another one that is emotion driven. Which one would you prefer? I think that uh, in the digital industry, let's say in the mainstream digital industry, there is uh, the common disbelief uh, that user experience means functionality. And of course, it's also super important that user experience are functional. But as Maurice said uh, this morning, uh, this is the starting basis. Why? Because uh, user experiences are experienced by humans and humans are the bad, have the bad habit to feel emotions. Emotions are so important for humans that we can say that feeling emotions is itself a human function. And do you know a particular field where we feel emotion the most? Our relationship with money. And this is a list of the main emotions we feel when we manage our money. We are happy maybe sometimes, or we feel anxiety, satisfaction, fear, frustration, stress, envy, excitement. This is why it's super important that when we build digital products, especially in the fintech field, we understand, read, and manage human emotions. So my name is Ilenia Notarangelo, and as creative director, my role is to bring uh, emotion and intentionality to, to digital products. And I'm here with... Anika Ramanukian, I'm the operations director and executive producer at ILO, and my role is to understand client needs and um, oversee the whole production from start to finish with our clients. We work at ILO, and ILO is a design studio based in Italy, focusing on illustration systems and motion design. In the past few years, we've worked on some really um, interesting and exciting projects for our clients. And when we work on illustration systems specifically, we always make sure that whatever we create is always scalable, consistent, and ownable. Uh, for example, we worked on a project for Google with very particular attention to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We worked with Alibaba to elevate their brand positioning. We also worked with Cisco, um, bringing all of the digital and physical products, uh, visual representation under one big visual umbrella. We also worked with the Nature Conservancy to raise awareness about climate change and also encourage everyone to take at least the smallest action. All of these different types of projects may fall into different categories, but here are the five things that usually our clients need. Um, the first one is to stand out. They want to always be different from their competition. The second one is bringing clarity to their users and giving them instructions that are very clear and understandable. Uh, providing direction, so uh, making sure that the users take a specific action, for example, sign up for a new feature. Uh, promote perseverance by minimizing drop-off rates and keeping users always engaged and very interested. And sometimes they also want to reposition themselves. When they come to us with these different types of <laughs> needs, sometimes what they forget to ask themselves, and which we ask for them, is what emotions should their audience experience when they are interacting with their product. And the very next question is how we can achieve this result, like putting emotion in our products. Uh, so we strongly believe that uh, to build a comprehensive, holistic user experience, uh, we have to rely on two types of aspects, functional aspects and emotional aspects. Functional aspects are all about efficiency, usability. They allow users to navigate properly, 
to achieve their goals effectively. These are some examples. They are not managing directly emotions, but they still prevent frustration and abandonment. And if you want to build a standard product, you can stay here with functionality. But if you want to create uh, an outstanding uh, experience, uh, you should to take care about uh, emotional aspects. Why? Because they lead to greater brand connection, memorability, and satisfaction. Here are some little examples. So it's super important that we both care about efficient usability, of course, but also meaningful interactions. Now, where we can put function and where we can put emotion. We built a very convenient pyramid at the bottom, systemic and consistent element at the top, authorial and tailored. Let's see. User interface, it's at the very bottom. Icons, yes, bottom. Nobody wants a very expressive icons. You want to go straight to the function. But then you have pictogram, badges, spot illustrations, and heroes. Here you need to be authorial and tailored. Now, how can we make sure that all these different pieces from different designers around the world, agency studios, can work together as a whole, as a consistent system. We have to stick to two pillars. The first one is having an ownable narrative. What is an ownable narrative? It's a story or a theme unique to the brand. It's about their values, their authenticity, their history. The other thing is the intentional aesthetic. Intentional aesthetic is a distinctive visual language and it's all about um, the brand uh, personality and its positioning in the market compared to competitors. Now, let's see some practical case studies. Okay, so the first case study that we brought to you is our work that we did in 2020 for Flowey. Flowey is the digital product of one of the biggest Italian uh, banking groups and it's aimed at a very young generation, a very young audience. So we're talking about very young adults, maybe Gen Z or even Gen Alpha, who are at the very beginning of their financial journey. And we also know them as like the generations that have probably the most anxiety about sustainability and the future world that they're going to live in. So their worry is not just about money. And uh, so we're taking their echo anxiety and turning that into um, consciousness. So um, we want to make them understand that all of their decisions about all of the aspects of their lives and the financial ones included will impact their future. So they're signing up for the first time and these are probably the emotions <laughs> that they're feeling like general anxiety, disinformation, maybe they don't feel like financial education is very meaningful to them at that point in, th in their lives. Maybe they're lacking a little bit of self-sufficiency because being so young, they're probably supported by their parents still. And maybe they don't feel like their decisions are so important. So um, we brought a lot of the nature and a lot of the things that they care about into the digital experience on the app with this illustration system. For example, um, we can see that the loading screen has a little firefly <laughs> that is helping them maybe wait. We also have the hummingbird that um, is there for the fast transactions. But we also have a tree that is being planted and blooming because for every 100 transactions on the app itself, there is a tree that is being uh, planted in their name and also like this is a completely digital product but when you ask for a card to be issued also your card is going to be made of wood. Um, so even the very trivial actions in the app, in all of the illustrations, we made sure to bring a little bit of the natural element. So even in this very simple check mark, it's composed of leaves. We also made sure to bring a third element into, into the game. So it's not just the bank and the users, but there is a middleman, the mentor, that is going to explain all of the financial um, topics to the users. For example, KYC procedures, face recognition, or even educating the users about things like going overdraft on your money. So the mentor is like stopping you for a moment and saying, maybe you should pay attention, like you're going into overdraft. Next emotion, next client. Let's see how we try to turn suspiciousness into awareness. The underlying question is, do I have the right tool to understand crypto? Or should I be a crypto bro to invest with crypto? This is a project we did for N26. 
so of course N26, uh, a European leading think tech player, um, they wanted to introduce within their app a new crypto section. They contacted us because they wanted that crypto uh, should be perceived in a natural way by the users. They should be part of a lifestyle management of money. Cryptos are intangible, but you can manage them. Let's see the starting point. So this was their illustration system. It was like figurative, uh, uh, illustrations, vector, very simple. Very, everything is very tangible. We have the hand putting the coin into the pot. What we try to do is to keep the hand element, the coin element, so the tangibility. We try to refresh the illustration style, making it a bit more uh, subtle and slick. Then we added the levitation to the coin, very simple. And then we added a sort of uh, digital tech aura. And then we added animation. And this is how the home page looked. Maybe slowly, okay. It's a bit slow here. And so you see very subtle animation, but like consistent with the rest of the app. And then we scale it to the system. So cryptos are just another phase of the coin. Uh, of course, trading has its own risk, but okay, we can face it. It's not like a big red cross. KYC questionnaires, take a bit. Sit back, relax, have your tea. And the last one, you are not eligible. Okay, it's not like a huge problem. It's a maze, but it with open ends. So maybe we're gonna solve it. Okay, and the last case study that we brought to you is for Strava, where we're taking the self-sabotage of some users and turning it into uh, motivation. So um, Strava, we know it's a sports app, and usually like the problem with sports and exercise apps is that it can be sometimes a little bit competitive, and maybe when you're signing up for it, you're probably feeling one of these things if you're not really a very sporty person, like how long are you going to last? Maybe you feel a little bit of shame about your body, about like your capabilities. You don't really feel represented in the field, not always, and maybe you don't feel like you could be supported. So we made sure that everyone on the app could feel like they're represented and that the app cares about them as well. So we took the anthropomorphic figure of the human being out of the question. The dynamism, the action, the sports can also be represented with a figure that is just with a head, a couple of legs and a couple of hands and that's all that was needed. We created this illustration system to represent all of the built-in challenges of the Strava app for the whole year 2023. Um, and um, we made sure that everyone understands that even little progress is always progress. That's why there are so many different tiers, so many different levels that you can complete within the app itself. So, Strava is there to celebrate with you your very first run <laughs> as if it was already like your first half marathon. And we also made sure that it sit well with all of the rest of the UI, of course, because those are things that we were not going to take um, our hands on. So what's next? And why did we talk about these emotional topics today with you? We wanted to conclude our talk um, why, uh, talking about why we think this is very relevant. So we are still human, and even though Technology is changing, it's evolving so very fast, it's not going anywhere, AI is not going anywhere, it's just going to be becoming even a bigger part of our lives. But we are going to stay human because we're not going to change as quickly as technology is changing, so we are still going to seek these emotions because, as we said, it's a fundamental function of the human being. So um, we think that um, we are still going to prefer an AI assistance voice that sounds really friendly, human, compassionate, empathetic, rather than something that is cold and distant. And um, of course, we're probably going to also prefer maybe a celebratory confetti on the screen when we finish a digital task, um, rather than just a boring old check mark. So we think that technology should be able to help us understand uh, and manage all of our emotions, but technology in itself should also understand and manage our emotions for us. And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you're such an inspiring talk. Thank so, you. Um, thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience? I see at the back. 
Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, thanks for this aesthetic talk. Um, how, how, what's your process of uh, meeting uh, the needs, the aesthetic needs of your of a user group, and do you also cater for products that have maybe different aesthetics for different groups? Yeah, um, basically, um, our clients usually come to us when they already have a specific understanding of what their users want because we don't manage like the ma marketing or the insights and research part ourselves. So uh, they come to us maybe already with a narrative in mind sometimes. Sometimes they just come with their branding or like references of style. And as for like uh, finding the right style for them, we're actually a team of like around 15 people at the moment. We have a huge team. Uh, not, well, not huge team, <laughs> but we have a team of designers that is uh, that can really, um, let's say, be very versatile in the uh, re search for the right style for them. And yeah, and in the first phase of uh, the projects, usually we explore three to four directions. Sometimes also the client runs some user testing to understand which one is the best one, or if they want to take a risk, maybe they want they go in the opposite direction, as we were like discussing in the panel. And uh, yeah, of course, like we can range from an abstract uh, illustration from some uh, more character base. So of course, in the clients already contact us in function of our portfolio. So of course, we have a specific style, but we totally adapt to the needs of the client. Mm -hmm. Question from the online audience. How do you convince companies to go for a bold new art direction instead of using, you know, this generic blank stuff? I mean, I think that they, if they already have contacted us, Absolutely. it's because they already know, I mean, they are looking for something different. Also because when uh, companies contact us, they usually already have a pretty big uh, design team, an internal design team. Mm -hmm. but. When they collaborate with us and we become, let's say, for three or four months, a whole team, it's because they want to uh, investigate with fresher eyes some mm -hmm. other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then we build the basis, we build maybe, let's say, the more authorial content, and then uh, the internal design team start from there. So we set maybe some guidelines, we discuss mm -hmm. them with them, and then, uh, of course, like it's the administration system is a living thing, it's not like something static. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question from the audience we have. Yeah, please. No, yeah. <laughs> this time. Thanks for this presentation. Uh, what do you think is important if a client approach you that the project will be successful? So the client comes with the function and you add the emotion. That's how at least I understand it. So what is key critical to have a successful project and collaboration? Well, it's both. They should also have like the probably the, the capacity to understand emotions as well. Also, because pr they're the ones who know their users and what what their users might want. Um, we have a very clear and very concise brief that we ask our clients to to fill out, and then it's always like a very conversational process, at least like in the very first few weeks when we're exploring the different directions. So um, it's like our brief, but then a lot of the conversations that happen with it. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I think that also having the right time uh, to develop something like this, uh, it's also key to a successful product. Mm -hmm. Another question from online audience. I also would be interested in your thoughts. Yeah, what are your ideas about the threat of AI-generated illustrations? You know, it's uh, within our last quote for uh, an illustration system, we are considering something AI-generated as well. Like, mm. I think that maybe right now we are building systems, but who knows, maybe in the next two or three years, our role will be building models. So, of course, we need humans to teach artificial intelligence. Right now, the market is very in a, like in early stage, so artificial intelligence can uh, study wherever they want. So mm -hmm. we, we don't have like particular constraint and we don't have also a clear legal uh, rules on how to use them. But I think that in the future, if you want to stand out from your competitors, you are not probably creating these images. Of course, we can use the power of AI generated because if we teach to the system an honorable narrative and intentional aesthetics, it can maybe create all the secondary images that maybe mm -hmm. nobody wants to create. Like if you have a catalog of uh, you know thousands of titles, you don't want to create a background for each one of that. But you want still humans, I guess, to create heroes content. 
Yeah, and I would just add that I think we, it was mentioned already, but uh, these models actually act on putting together the pieces that are already there. So it's really difficult for an AI model to uh, to actually create the iPhone. <laughs> so uh, that's what we think. Like we need to give the right input to actually then later on give the hands to uh, to AI to create everything for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Last question from the audience. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, great presentation. I, I found it really <laughs> powerful the way you're solving emotional problems through illustration. And it got me thinking that a lot of the problems that we have in the world today in society, um, you could stem from the fact that we are emotional beings. Um, so with that in mind, if there was one problem you could solve in the world, mm. using your system, what would it be? A very philosophical one. Oh my okay. God, I mean, <laughs> it could be like a very difficult question. I, I, I think that it's very important, like there is not a solution that fits at all. It's important to listen to the specific case and trying to understand what people are feeling in that time, especially when they deal with, the, like our role here is trying to connect a human with a piece of technology. And so we have to fill the gap that technology can offer by like creating an extra layer of care and of emotion. So I don't think that illustration system can bring peace or save the world or, but in general, I feel that uh, if in all our communication, we are more emotion driven, probably with time we can have a better world, but like this is very generic. I don't know if you want to add. Oh yeah, I thought it was like a very broader question. So at the moment, world peace would <laughs> be like very relevant, I would say. But yeah, I totally agree with Ila. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Annie and Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.